Hi, I'm Alistair Chapman, and in this video, we're going to look at exposure and controlling your exposure. Now, what is exposure? Well, exposure is getting that balance in your pictures between them being too dark and too bright. You don't want your pictures so bright that everything looks very washed out and very pale, as in this example. And you don't want your pictures so dark that you can't see what's going on, as in this example. A good exposure will be in the middle, people's faces will look natural, plants, trees will all look natural, and at the same time, if you can avoid it, you don't want your sky to be nothing but white. Now, it can sometimes be very difficult to get that perfect balance. Cameras have a limited dynamic range. So normally when you are shooting, you'll be favoring faces, plants, the foreground of your picture and making those look natural. And it may be that you have to put up with a little bit of the sky being overexposed. That isn't unusual with video and that is expected. One thing to be aware of, if you are doing post-production work on your material, so if you're going to film in the camera and then take that footage to the edit suite or the studio so you can manipulate it later, you will probably want to have your exposure a little bit lower because if things are overexposed, if they are too bright, it's very difficult to correct that in an edit suite. If things are a little bit dark, they can be brightened a little bit in the edit suite. So if you are unsure, it's better to be a little bit dark rather than being a little bit bright. So how do we control our exposure? Well, there are three things that affect our exposure. The first one is how much light is falling on the sensor. The second is how long do we allow the light to fall on the sensor, controlled by the shutter speed. And the last one is how sensitive we make the sensor. If we make the sensor more sensitive, the picture becomes brighter. Let's look at those in more detail. The first is controlling how much light falls on the sensor, and that's controlled by the iris or aperture and the ND filters. The iris is like a window on the lens that opens and closes and lets different amounts of light in. A small aperture will have a big number like f11, f16, and only lets through a very small amount of light. A big aperture, which is a small number like f2.8, f3.5, lets through a lot more light. Behind the aperture in the lens, we then have ND filters. And ND filters are like sunglasses for the camera. We can switch in ND filters, and each ND filter has more attenuation. It reduces the light by more, and we can keep switching in more ND filters, like putting on darker and darker pairs of sunglasses on the camera, a very useful feature. So by using the iris combined with the ND filters, we control how much light falls on the sensor. Something to be aware of is that if you have a very small aperture, perhaps f11 or f16, you may find that your pictures look a little bit soft and not quite in focus. So if you are finding that when you try and focus the camera, the pictures look a little bit blurry or a little bit soft, it's worth checking to make sure that the iris isn't at f11 or f16. If it is, that's when you use the ND filters. You add an extra step of ND filter, which will then allow you to open the iris a bit more and your pictures will become sharp again. So do be aware that F16, F11 is not good and use ND filters to make sure that the iris is more open than F11. Now the next thing that changes how much light is falling on the sensor is the shutter. We have a separate video about shutter speed, so if you want to know more about shutter speed, do take a look at that video. But generally speaking, a faster shutter speed, like 1 250th or 1 1000th, will significantly reduce the amount of light falling on the sensor. 
and will make the picture darker. If you turn the shutter off, the shutter will be running at 1 25th of a second or 1 50th. It'll be 1 25th if you're 25p and 1 50th if you're 50i. And that gives the maximum amount of light falling on the sensor. So if you're shooting in low light or poor lighting conditions, turn your shutter off that will give you the brightest looking picture. Now the next thing that you can use to control how bright your picture is, is the gain control. And this can be programmed with different settings, but normally it will be set to zero, which is the standard default setting, which is what you normally want to use, and then plus nine or plus 18 dB of gain using the gain switch. Gain will make the picture look brighter, but the more gain you add, the more noise your picture will have. The picture will get very grainy and look very noisy, especially if you use 18 dB of gain. And this can also make the picture look a little bit soft. It can make focusing harder because all of that noise and all of that grain takes away some of the sharpness of the image. So wherever possible, shoot with zero dB gain. This will give you the best quality pictures. However, sometimes you may find yourself filming in a dark street or outside at night, and you may have to use gain. My recommendation would just be to use the bare minimum gain that you need to make the exposure acceptable. Don't use more gain than you really need. And of course, remember, once you've finished that shoot in the dark area, to turn the gain back to zero. So that's it, that's controlling exposure through a combination of iris, changing the amount of light coming into the camera, the ND filters to make sure your iris isn't too closed, the shutter speed and the gain. By using those settings together, you can control exactly how bright or how dark your images are.